it's so wonderful to work in a place where people have a strong connection to the university and they want to share what they have. They want to be part of that history. And I keep saying that archives is completely dependent on relationships. You know, you, you want to make sure that people understand that we appreciate the history of the university itself. Because of COVID, we're working in different locations. Nicole is, she's taken over, I guess, the photographic archives. And what I mean by that is we have negatives for both the university and for the San Marcos Daily Record. So we figure we've got at least a million and a half images, and that's just a ballpark figure. Um, for our purposes, we're talking about plastic-based negatives, and the older ones are nitrate-based. Um, nitrate, it's highly unstable. If you have them in a closed space, they're off-gassing because they're deteriorating because they're old, they can spontaneously combust. <laughs> so we kind of had that pressure at the beginning to get those digitized and get them out of the way. So I've been creating, using a program to create these archival information packages to put metadata with these digital files and be able to back them up in a way. So if we do have a critical failure, we have a backup. And then Laura is working on processing and she's got um, a degree in public history as well. So she's all about, you know, the historical stuff and um, helping students in classrooms work with the material. So she's had some experience with that. If students on their own are working on a project and find something in the catalog that, that might be of use to their um, research, it's, yeah, we're absolutely open to, to doing that. I think a lot of students come into, especially undergrads, but even some graduate students who have never really used an archive, um, so it's kind of a way to introduce them to archives to kind of show folks that, you know, we're not gatekeepers. We want you to access our materials. That's why we have them. I think even with librarians, sometimes people feel like they're unapproachable, but to kind of take down those barriers for people to see that you're allowed to come in, you're allowed to meet with us, you're allowed to look at our materials. But University Archives is officially located on the fifth floor of the Alkec Library. And that's normally where we work, that's where our offices are. But our collections have been moved over to the Archives and Research Center, which is referred to as the ARC, that was designed to hold library and archives materials in a preservation environment. So we have one environment that's good for paintings and wooden things and artifacts that can't handle super cold temperatures. And then we have another piece that's much bigger. I think it's 34 foot stacks, um, high density storage designed for paper and black and white photographs love that environment as well. You know, just about any aspect you wanna research, we probably have some, some records that will help you do that. It's easy to, you know, to come to this campus and be a student and spend your four years here and not know anything about it. But if you come here and, you know, you look at notebooks from students that were here over a hundred years ago you know you kind of form a connection with this with the place and with the people that were here before you making those connections definitely helps people understand history better and to feel that connection with it is important to the understanding process preserving is really about evidence you know and I look at this like, I might think this piece of paper is boring, but it might be really important to someone else. So I don't even necessarily have to understand why I'm, pres why I'm putting like a bunch of papers in a folder and putting it in a box and spending time doing that because I know it's gonna be, hopefully we're used to our acquisition, right? We're gonna be using it as evidence. It's evidence that we were here, we existed, and we impacted the world. The pedagogues, the yearbooks, and the star were my three priorities the day one I walked into Texas State. And the pedagogues are the first ones to go up. And that one I think is one of my happiest achievements in that so many people related to this university remember the pedagogue. You know, it was the student yearbook. That's where you found anything that happens to students. And so many people connect with that, that our numbers are just off the charts. Like, 
thousands of people look at the pedagogues every month. I really enjoy this collection. It's been really fun as someone who's like new to San Marcos. Um, I've been learning a lot about the history. And um, so like, I find photos interesting in archives because you have a photo of a person, like you don't know who this person is. It doesn't really tell you anything. It's not really important. But if that photograph is attached to a story, a letter, you know their name, it has like a date scratched on the back. Um, all of a sudden you have great data, like somebody looking for this person or wanting to know more about this, you can now actually find it. I didn't have a whole lot of oral history experience till I came here. And so it's really fun. It's like we have all these stories and, you know, listening to people's voices, I think makes them alive. She was here forever, wasn't she, Miss Spark? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and the thing is that we, we just accepted these things. I, see, this is why I think your generation is questioning. And I think it helps impress the fact that they were real and they're not just a story. They, they had a lot of the same experiences that you're having. And I think that helps, you know, whether it's somebody you, you like or you don't like, it helps show you that we're all walking in those same footsteps. The thing, you know, you look at those pictures and, and those people are so young and their lives are just beginning. And then you realize, oh, this was like over a hundred years ago. These people are not here anymore. And it's easy to look at those things and see what students were doing in different time periods and then compare that to what is happening now. While there's huge differences, obviously, there's also a lot of similarities still, like we were talking about with the the scrapbooks being like social media. There's a lot we are missing because we didn't have an archives for so many years, but it's amazing what turns up. We get a lot of things from people whose parents or grandparents attended Texas State back in the day when it was Southwest. And they want those materials to go somewhere. And so they ask if they can send them to us. We love to have people donate because the only way we get materials is for people to let us know that they have them and then give them to us. <laughs> so we really appreciate receiving those, but it does help if we know who it's from, we have a contact person, and we have a transfer form, which gives us the authorization to accept those materials. Ideally, that kind of like conversation about donating something, it's an information collecting process. I'm getting to know you, you're getting to know me, and it's a trust process as well. That kind of back and forth is really important. So when people send us stuff in the mail, we're like, oh, this is really cool. Thanks for these glasses that have you know, Southwest Texas written on them. But we'd really like to know more about you. Where do you happen? Where do you come from? Are you an alumni? Did your grandfather go? Did you find this in a yard sale? But that, that can definitely be a problem. And I think that definitely going forward, that's something that you know we would like to do with any incoming collections. Talk to the donor, make sure it's something that fits our collection and makes sense to be here. If it's not, if it doesn't fit our collection, then help them find the institution or repository where it does make sense for them to donate it. And I think it's too that people, if you don't say specifically, I would like this to go to Texas State, I think sometimes people feel like, well, this has some worth and I don't wanna throw it away because it was my mom's or whatever. So, which is good because we, appreciate those kinds of donations. I really like my job. I love what I do. I wish that more people knew about the archives and maybe your project will help people know about it. And if anyone has any questions ever, we're here. If you ever want to come back and research or look at things, we're, that's what we're here for.